as we look at the question of health care, the fight that's up before the Supreme Court right now. Bob, thanks for joining the program again. Jack, um, uh, excuse me if I'm a little depressed about today when you listen to Roberts and you listen to Kennedy and you realize that what you got is a bunch of uh, rich guys in robes with federal health insurance themselves who have no clue about poor and average people who need and many wouldn't have adequate health insurance without this bill, which it took generations for Congress to pass. So when you listen to the debate segments today, uh, you realize that Jeff Tubin is probably right when he said that uh, from CNN that it looks like the law will be struck down. And I'm, I'm sad about that because uh, I, I just don't know what you do about the fact that you, you we're, we've tried so hard to make sure that children's care through age 26 is covered, that there's cheaper and free drugs for 45 million seniors, pre-existing conditions covered, no lifetime caps, not being thrown off if sick, free mammograms and colonoscopies, and making sure that 85% of the benefits that you pay for in premiums actually, that 85% of your premiums actually are used for benefits. The court's ready to throw that out because of their preconceived political notions. Do you think then, especially when you look at the likes of Justice Kennedy, let's face it, if we're going to talk about swing voters, if we're going to talk about the guys who are usually in the middle where you're going 4-4 in the swing, he's usually the swing guy. I mean, isn't that the reason you're going to be really concerned now? Well, when he asked, why are you forcing people to buy, that means we know where he's coming down on the mandate, and it was called a disaster uh, for the uh, liberals today on the, on the court. And people said that our solicitor general did a very bad job, Varelli. Uh, he couldn't even make the case on the mandate that he knew that was going to be questioned about for two years. How he could not say that health care is one-sixth of the economy, how he could not say that 99 percent of, of people use health care, they're born in a hospital, uh, how he could not say that it's a, a unique uh, product that's different from any other kind of a product. It's not like broccoli. It's not like uh, like gyms where it's discretionary. Health care, you have to use, and, and, and we're being re reamed with twice the cost because of the insurance companies, uh, that, and yet we're only 45th and 49th in life expectancy and infant mortality because we're not getting the best health care, and this bill is an attempt to address that. How he could not walk in with sound bites like those ready to use to just throw back out in, in the carp, you know, the quick way you have to do to the Supreme Court when they ask you questions is beyond me that the Solicitor General, Kagan, I hope, is a save, as they say. They had, you know, the, the TV said it was so bad, they asked if there was a save, and the save could be that... Uh, Elena Kagan, who was Solicitor General, could say, hey, he sucked, but, uh, you know, I, I would have made the following case, guys, and maybe she could join the old boys club when they have their debate behind closed doors and say what he should have said is. Bob Weiner is my guest. Again, he's been working on this issue for decades now. Well, well, Bob, an aspect of this, though, before the court today was not just about the individual mandate in general, but the ability to actually strike down that portion of the law and have the rest of it continue to go forward. That's tomorrow's debate. That was not today's. And what's the and perception of that? And then? that's what we have to wait for tomorrow. We're, I'm hoping... You know, I just got uh, finished a little meeting with uh, John Larson, who's the chair of the Democratic Caucus of the House. I, I tried to do a little homework before I came over here and see what people think. His hope is that the whole bill be struck down. And I said, no, Congressman, that's not mine. I differ from you. I want to take what we can get. I want what's called severability. Because he thinks if the whole bill struck down, we can make a massive mobilization about it and get people really upset and get the man and get single payer. You know, the politics of the votes aren't there for single payer. Hillary uh, had that in her bill, but you really couldn't even get to 60 in the Senate without the compromise through the private sector. And with the 160 uh, amendments that we gave to the Republicans for tax breaks for small business that we did in the bill, don't let people tell you we didn't compromise. We did on private sector and the small business tax breaks. But it's very important that severability be allowed and maybe this court, that's the best deal we can get, Conyers told me. John Conyers, the dean of the Congressional Black Caucus, I agree with him and he agrees with me that if we're lucky, we'll get that they will allow the uh, still requiring the insurance companies to provide those provisions, the children's care, the senior drugs, the pre-existing conditions, no lifetime caps, not being thrown off if sick, the preventive care, and the 85% has to go through benefits. Uh, maybe we'll be able to keep those provisions, which are critical provision, provisions. But then jo John Larson, the House Democratic Caucus chair, said that the insurance companies would have to pay for those, that, 
that's not the Supreme Court's job. The Congress has, for, since time immemorial, since the creation of the Republic, required standards for uh, various uh, pr provisions, whether it's food safety, health safety, or, or what have you. This is simply a, providing a, a requirement of, of standards that have to be met. It's, they are standards that Congress passed when I was chair, chief of staff of the House Aging Committee on, on uh, Medigap coverage, and it had to meet good housekeeping seals of approval by, by doing certain things. So there's, there's total precedent for those specific provisions. Of course, the problem is that this court is five to four political. They voted Bush v. Gore and they voted Citizens United to reject 75 years of precedent and inject money back into politics. And they could easily, because it's Obama's signal accomplishment, simply throw the whole thing out. I would like to see those provisions stay kept in. I don't take the position for any political purpose that it's easier to argue uh, politically and get more votes uh, in an election if you throw half of a bill out. I think we've got to take what we can get uh, you know, legislatively, do the best job we can for the American people, and then take credit for those provisions staying in the law. Are you shocked then if you consider that this has been a five to four split again and again and again? And we've seen five uh, justices of the court uh, regularly drive to the right. We've seen this most of these most recently under uh, President Bush, who put them into place, including Roberts, Alito, etc., to actually do this. This shouldn't be a shock to anybody in the room, should it? It's not a shock to me. I think I was the only Democratic strategist saying and asking, why is the Obama administration so confident? That's my op-ed in the Palm Beach Post, October 5th, 2011. Go to wienerpublic.com and click on op-eds and you will see it. Hot topic, health care law heads of the Supreme Court. Why is the Obama administration so confident? And I predicted 5-4 against us on exactly the basis you described, Jack. Well, if we look at the future then, I mean, worse come worse and everything goes south on us. The entire Affordable Care Act is simply found unconstitutional. It took 20 years to actually get to this point That's where it was right. even more, passed. More, more, so, since Harry Truman. Well, but I mean, even if we go with the effort from 93 and then we go back yeah. to Truman before that, right. we're talking 20 years. If this goes south, is there even any remote chance in your lifetime, in my lifetime, in my children's lifetime that you would ever see an alternative bill uh, come to fruition, actually become a law? Well, Romney said that we'll pass something else. That's a crock, Jack. It's simply not true. Even Boehner tried to block the, the most non-controversial of all the provisions, the pre-existing conditions coverage uh, that's in the Obama bill. Uh, and he tried to block it because the insurance companies don't want to lose one penny of money out of their $200 billion a year in profit that they make from us. So it's not going to happen. We have what we have now. It'll take another generation to get any significant health care bill through. We'll have to lobby it. We'll make it an issue. We'll try to change the Congress. We'll try to change the Supreme Court. I hope I'm surprised on a number of fronts. I hope I'm surprised that this court actually would vote severability and allow the provisions in. I hope I'm surprised. It ain't going to happen in June that the court allows the mandate. It's not going to happen. Not based on the questions. Those are indicative. And Tubin's a savvy court watcher. He, I think he's right. So given that that isn't going to happen and that the Republicans will talk a good game and constantly talk. You remember during the whole health care debate, they said start all over again and we'll pass. They weren't going to pass anything. They come up with a two-page policy paper. That's all they came up with. And that's not how you change laws. So it is nonsense to say that we will get another bill, uh, although it is the right thing to do if it does go down. You know, based upon your prognostications of the past and really as of what we've been saying over this week, how do you think this is going to play out? I mean, in your gut, what do you think is going to happen when the court comes down? In, I, I, we're assuming June at this point. Right now, based on today and before I hear tomorrow, when I hope I'm wrong about severability questions and allowing it, but I think they're going to tie it together and take the insurance company bait that they theoretically can't afford to pay for the provisions without this, the well people also being in it as a mandate, and therefore they'll throw the whole thing down. Um, I think that's how it's going to go. I think that's how it plays out, Jack. And um, I hope I'm wrong. I hope they vote for the mandate, and I hope I, they vote for severability if they don't vote for the mandate. But I don't think that's how it plays out. I think it's 5-4 against. I think it's an overturned uh, case. And is it just a complete disaster in every sense of the word? Well, it still means that the American people have the right to be livid and to reelect President Obama and to allow him to make a new Supreme Court appointees. Because 
really like it was an impeachment, like it wasn't Bush v. Gore. It's not, you know, you can make the arguments. We can all play lawyer. We do it very well. We can argue from either side, but it's really a question of who has the votes. Yeah, but at the same time, let's face it, if President Obama is reelected and he's going to replace anybody, the likelihood of, of anybody leaving the court, it's going to be the likes of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I mean, it's not going to be uh, Alito. It, it's not going to be even a Kennedy. It's, 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 it's not. I mean, if you look at age, you look at health, uh, what we're seeing is at best a replacement let alone a further shift uh, at least stopping the shift to the right it's not going to change that jack a close friend of mine who's not even 60 just had a stroke roberts the chief justice has heart fibrillation problems and those were openly uh, described as he took the chief justice ship and they said it shouldn't stop him from being chief justice so you really don't know on those questions that's the kind of thing that can surprise us no, fair enough. Obviously, we're going to continue to watch this. Everybody in the country is watching this. Bob, again, I love your passion. I love your fight. I love your honesty. And thank you very much for joining me. Jack, it's a pleasure. Thanks for letting me bring it out. Bye-bye. You, you bet. Bob Weiner again, the House Drug Czar for a long time, founder of Robert Weiner Associates, political aide to Ted Kennedy.